Welcome to this week's Powerhouse. We've got some real treats for you lot today, so check this out. On this week's turbocharged, meat-filled powerhouse, Dave Greenwood finally gets close to maturity, if not sensibility, with the Family Man Speed Machine, the modified Passat. I'll be drooling all over this rally Cordoba, and we'll be having a laugh learning the technicalities of nitrous injection. Definitely not one for the faint-hearted. Welcome back. As promised, we've got something a little bit special for you. It's obviously a Volkswagen Passat. This year's Executive Express taking on Audi and other people. This is a 1.8T 20 valve, which is special enough as it is. But this one has been Ottingered. It's got bigger turbo, the EQ's been done. I mean, these things are 150 brake horsepower to begin with. Now, once you've played around with this engine, we're talking about huge power. So why you lot out there aren't doing anything with them is unbelievable. The styling is very classy. I really like this car just for the styling alone. I mean, if we come along the car, we've got huge 17 inch alloys on there. The car has been dropped a good 30, 40 mil as it is anyway. So look at the size of the arches. You're gonna fit all sorts under there. I reckon you could push it to about 19 mil under there. As we move along, standard interior, I reckon you could do a lot more in there. Let's go and see some of these seat people. Let's see what they can fit in these things. Let's get some leather in there as well. This is just fantastic. Why is nobody doing anything more with these things? Let me just show you this. Come here. What are you doing in there? Get out. Come on. I'm going to look for the install. Come on, get out. Killjoy. The size of this boot is huge. You're going to fit amps, subs, you're going to fit all sorts in it. It's even got its little own power outlet down there as well. You want to start modifying these real big. These could be the next car, you know. Never mind your golfs and such things. Let's go and see the guy that uh, has done all this, Rob Barker. Rob, how are you? What's your connection with this car? Well, we <coughs> bought the car from the people that actually did the conversion and our idea is to sell off this car modifications we try it with different cars um, to get into the marketplace with accessories such as the alloy wheels um, bumpers spoiler kits this one develops 243 brake horsepower on the engine and um, we feel that it's if you're slightly bored with your car and you want something slightly different then come along and see us and we'll try and do something for you with it you know um, there is, as you said, a lot more which you can do. It depends on the price you want to spend and how far you want to go. And um, this is going into ordinary people. Most people, this can be a family-owned car where you can safely take the family out of the weekend <laughs> and have a little bit of fun as well at yeah. the same time. If you want to tow with the car, the brake horsepower allows you to tow with the car. What kind of people are buying this car? All kinds of people. I mean, <coughs> it, it, it fits into the company representative yeah, that's, side. That's... Um, middle management, you have a basic 1600 Passat right through to the um, synchro four-wheel drive. So there's a huge range in between with the turbo sport cars too. How much does a conversion like this on a, on a car like this cost? Well, the, I think the conversion on the engine is approximately three and a half thousand pounds. It may sound a lot of money, but there's a lot of work. It took four days in Germany to do that conversion. In the UK now, the mechanics who are trained to do this, or the technicians, that can do it in probably about two days. The, the alloy wheels and tyres, you can spend a thousand pound operating. The body kit, you can spend 500 or a thousand pound, depending on how far you want to go. I mean, you can get an entry level car coming into the country around about 15 to 16 thousand pounds, and then move on to whatever you want to spend. A car like that, used on the market today, w would be fully converted under 20 thousand pounds. So what's been people's reactions to the car? Well, oh, tremendous. Yeah. Uh, more so after it's been driven, Dave, you mm. know. Um, once they see the car, they start to ask about what the car is. So we explain the details, as we have done today, and the prices. Um, the prices scare a few people. Mm. Um, not everyone can afford it, of course. Yeah. But to drive the car, they think, is absolutely tremendous. <laughs> and it also helps to sell the other Passats then, because you can see what they can do, where they can perform, and if they want to take that decision later, they can always do it at a later date. Yeah, I can understand. I mean, I really fancy having a go. I also fancy a go in the, uh, the 4 before Synchro. I mean, isn't that the, the, the V6? Yeah, that is a tremendous car. With a Tiptronic yeah. gearbox, that car is something to drive. Yeah. Well, I fancy a go in that if you can let me have a go. Yeah, <laughs> we'll have to see. <laughs> <laughs> What's this actually? 
actually drive like this particular car? Very, very stable on the road. Yeah. The road holding and the handling is tremendous. The most important thing to watch in this car, of course, is the mirrors and the speedometer. <laughs> it's, it's so easy to drive the car and not realise the speed you're doing. It's smooth, it's quiet, it just handles like a Volkswagen, you know. Yeah, it's so nice and subtle, though, as well, it really is. Mm. I mean, do you think this is the way a lot of people are going... Uh, I mean, more mature people are going to be going towards as far as getting a, a better driver's car? I think the answer to that question is absolutely yes, but I think after you've driven it in a little while, you'll perhaps have your own opinion of the car. Mm. Nice. Well, I look forward to that. Rob, thank you very much for coming. Thank you for bringing the car. I mean, for me, it's the ultimate street sleeper. I think it's fabulous. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you for asking, Dave. Thank you. Thanks, very much. Thanks a lot, Rob. Nice day. Cheers. Hello, children. Piston's back. Mm, yes, this week I'm going to explain to you about aquaplaning. You've all heard of it, of course, but do you know what makes it happen? Well, when you fit your nice wide tyres to your flash motor, mm, well, what happens is you go into a layer of water and some of the water stays underneath. The tyre rides over the top and that means you lose grip and you slide around. And that's aquaplaning. As you can see here is a narrow tyre, narrow tyre, cuts right through the water, gets right through, and then it grips the road. And that's why in wet conditions, as we have rather a lot here, you'll find that narrow tires are actually better than wider tires, which actually give you less grip in wet weather. Okay, bye bye children. Say hello to my little friend. This is Lobo Castro's favorite car. It's a Seat Cordoba, a two liter 16 valve, and it's a belter. It's got the rally look about it, as you'll see now. If we check the front out, got a quad headlamp uh, kit there, which looks wicked. Front bumper looks bad. And uh, it's got these eyeball fog lights as well, which I'm getting right into at the moment, to be honest. Move our way up the bonnet here, and this is the best feature. Check this out. <laughs> Water sensitive wipers. 110 sheets, not too bad at all, really, is it? If we go along, obviously, here, we've got the side skirts. But uh, before we come to those, we've got these nice large wheels. They're 17 inches, these. And I know that bigger ones would look amazing, but I've been told they're really hard to put in. And uh, the car's been dropped 40 mils as well, so you're talking, that's a bit, about the maximum you can put in there, I think. Like we said, the side skirts here are uh, the essential touch to any rally lookalike car. We open the door here. Ooh, carbon fiber looks sea pillar. Beauty. Carbon fiber kick plates. Uh, he's put some nice piped uh, floor mats in there, which do the job nicely. Gear knob, color coded, and decent pedals. Nice little package. This car's 174 brake horsepower over the year, uh, standard 150. So it's got a little bit more oomph, and I think maybe the uh, straight exhaust from the cap back probably helps that a bit. But uh, I haven't driven the car, so I don't know, but I know a man who has over here. This is John. John, welcome to the show. How are you? Thank you. Very well, yourself? Not too bad, thanks. Good. Now, what does this car go like? Quite well. Yeah? Yeah, very well indeed. Thank you. What's the, uh, what's the handling like on it? Because they're, they're amazing cars, aren't they? Yeah, they, really they do well, handle very, very well. Um, they're a car you can have fun with, which is the best thing, I think, with them. Yeah, and this is, this is the full, pretty much rally spec, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, that you can get on the road, obviously, yeah. Yeah, and does it perform like it there? Not quite, but it's, <laughs> it's good enough, it's close enough. Since they've become sort of F2 champions, sort of 96 onwards, has that really filtered down to the, to the way that our road cars are going, do you think? It seems to be doing with Seat. Um, we're getting a lot more people going out of sort of the Mark II Volkswagen Golfs into this type of thing. Um, it does sort of herald back to the old days of the yeah, Mark II, That's it, the Mark II Golf was the ultimate tuning car. Mm. Seat's tending to be taken over from that a lot. Um, again, a lot of the parts are all Volkswagen, well, all the parts are Volkswagen, uh, obviously being owned by Volkswagen, so yeah. Why do you think that is? Why do you think the, the Cordoba and the Ibiza are really taking over from, from sort of the Golfs and the, the Polos? I mean, the G40 was excellent, but... I think a lot of it's down to the how Volkswagens have gone dearer and dearer. Seat have come in with the same technology, but a lot to better value for money. It seems to be working for them well and the rally success. Is, is there a lot of demand for these, these kits? Yeah, just a little bit, yeah. There's a lot of people we get on um, daily. We're taking two or three inquiries about body styling for the cars. What's the kind of price range you're looking at for... Um... For a full body kit uh, fitted to an Ibiza, including front, side and rear aerofoil to make it look like the rally replica, uh, stay at dealers are quoting £1,500 fitted. That's quite reasonable, really. It's good, because it really sets the car off nicely. Yeah, what about as far as wheels go as well? Wheels, again, 
the sky's the limit, whatever you want to pay. Um, the wheels on that, they cost sort of about £120 each. You can go and get Rally Replica Speedline wheels. They're about £170 each plus VAT. Um, Tires, as you said before, you can only go up to the 17s though. Yeah. They won't fit under the arts. So, so no matter how much bending or uh, grinding or anything you do there, there's you, just you not can, Yeah, you can try and pull the arch out, but to get any more, you've actually got to extend, pull the drive shafts out. Yeah. Otherwise, you hit, it's actually the insides of the arches that you're hitting, not the outsides. No, that's not a big thing, is it? I mean, full respect to 17-inch going under there yeah. to begin with. That's anything bigger just spoils the handling. Well, 17s that's it. works just nicely. Yeah, 17s, very, it looks yeah. very good on them as yeah. well. Yeah. They don't look too small no. or, you know, They're not over silly. the top, they're just sensible. Is this, is this your actual car, this one? This is one that I did up at SBG Sport for Premier Garage. Um, they wanted something individual um, to stand out, to put in the showroom, to put on shows. Um, they basically gave me free reign to do with it. So what was the first thing you did? Uh, drop the suspension, put the body kit on, tune the engine, <laughs> exhaust, it just, the list is just a complete A4 sheet of what's been done. But did you start off with a finished article in mind, kind of, did you think, right, I want to... I got ideas of what we wanted to do and it was just added to all the time. We wanted to do body kit, we wanted to do the engine, then we thought, no, you've got to do the wheels as well, and no, you've got to do the exhaust as well, and we put a CD player in it. Uh, all sorts, carpet mats, gear knob, pedals, the lot. We just went to town. What would be the next thing you'd do to this, this car? Um, interior. Leather interior. Oh, without a nice a doubt. leather definitely, interior. Yeah. yeah, get some cow in there. Yeah, definitely. definitely. Well, it's a beautiful car, John, and uh, thanks a lot for bringing it down. Well, okay. Can I have a drive in this one? Go on, then, I'll let you. Well, if you think that was good, wait till you see what we've got coming up in part two. We've shown you Renault 5s before, we've shown you wide arch body kits before, but not like this one. This is a Skeet Motorsport. Some of you might have seen it before, it used to be very green. Some of you might remember it. And it's on by this man, Daz. How are you doing? Not bad. I mean, these are huge fun, Daz, anyway. I mean, they're very quick, but you've gone quicker, haven't you? Yeah, gone a lot quicker. How have you managed that, mate? Uh, fit a nitrous oxide to it. Right, so, how have you done that? Basically, it's a kit that you buy. Mm -hmm. A bottle in the boot, which holds the nitrous, which is connected to two solenoids and basically it just puts it into the engine through the carburetor. Right, so it just injects it straight into the, straight into the mix? That's right. So how does it work, nitrous? What it does is it injects fuel and nitrous together, and when it mixes, it, it creates a molecule of oxygen, which uh, basically races the engine, you know, explodes the pistons twice as fast. Right, so, I mean, uh, how fast a boost is that going to give you? On the top of it, it's already brake horsepower, another 50 brake instantly when you flick it on. So is that, is that a choice of 50 brake horse? Could you... No, you can start from 25 brake jets and go up to 125 brake jets instantly. Right, so you're talking about actual little jets yeah, that you put into the engine? Yeah, that fit into the uh, solenoids and it basically pushes out the amount of nitrous you use. So 125 brake jets? Is the maximum, yeah. Is the maximum. It's a bit daft, I think. <laughs> yeah. I don't think you want to put that on there and rip your engine apart. No, no. <laughs> Probably pull the bumper off. <laughs> How easy is it to fit? It's quite easy, actually. I fit it myself. Did you really? Yeah, because they charged quite a bit to fit it, so they gave me instructions and I did it myself. Just went off and did it? Yeah. Well, I mean, you're obviously going to have to work it from the cabin itself. Yeah. Uh, so how do you manage to do that? Right, it's activated by two switches. One's a protection switch, and the other one basically just flick it on, and it works. So what do you mean by a protection switch? Well, what it does is, when the engine's stopped, if nitrous leaks into the pistons, uh, and you turn the engine over with a spark, it will explode, basically. And blow your just engine up. Just blow the engine up. Blow so, your car up, probably, as well. <laughs> yeah, so you switch it off, which turns the engine over with no spark, so it cleans the piston pots, Right. Make sure there's no nitrous in them, then you just flick it on and the engine starts. That's right. it. Make sure it's safe. No, so no it clears everything out for yeah, you and then it's safe yeah, to turn so. over. And then, like you're saying, your other switch, you just switch you it flick on when it you on, want it. Put your foot to the floor, which activates another switch, then tells the uh, solenoids to basically put it all into the engine. So thrust it all in there. Yeah. So, I mean, that must be huge fun. Yeah, oh yeah. How long it's... does it last for? 
Not very long. Two and a half minutes. Two and a half minutes. Two and a half minutes. That's it. I mean, that's just uh, that's just a bit silly. What sort of money are we talking to fit a nitrous bottle and, and everything? Well, for the whole kit, it's approximately five hundred pound to six hundred, depending on what size bottle you have in the back. Right. Well, let's go and have a look at that bottle right now. <clears throat> And uh, there it is. I thought that was a fire extinguisher when you first arrived. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Shows how stupid I can be. Anyway, right, so, I mean, how much is that going to cost you to, to have that refilled? I mean, you're going to have to refill it every yeah. two and a half minutes, aren't you? Approximately £20, £5 worth of nitrous liquid, because nitrous is a liquid and not a gas. Right. Right, that's it, basically. Right. Quite so... expensive stuff. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and highly illegal on the road, I would have said. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I'm sure you've tested it on lots of private roads. Yeah, <laughs> quite a few. <laughs> what sort of uh, top speed can nitrous push you to? Or it's not, not so much really... top speed, it's bottom end. So you're talking 0 to 60. With nitrous on that engine, I'd say about four and a half seconds, 0 to 60. That's just horrendous, yeah. four and a half seconds. Will you do me a favour? What? Take me to a chat and give us a shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll even pay you 20 notes to have the nitrous put in. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> Right, so if I wanted nitrous fitting, would you say to go for it? Yeah, but do it stagely, you know what I mean? Like 25 brake jets first, and then if it's not powerful enough, then go up. Don't go up too much, because you might blow your engine up. <laughs> you know, you might be putting a bit too much brake horsepower into it. What about torque steering, that sort of thing? Have you got any problems with, with that when you put it it's on? With? With torque steer, pulling your it, steering wheel it about. It pulls you about. Yeah? yeah. It's a lot of G-force, just pulls you back, basically. Right. And putting it on the ground, have you got any problems putting no. it? No. No? It spins a lot. Yeah, with can the, imagine. With the power. Yeah, it spins right through to fourth. Yeah, well, third. <laughs> Not about fourth. <laughs> Not that bad. Perhaps if I put bigger brake, uh, brake or power jets in, it might. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you do that, I want to see well, it Wheels again. will probably blow off anyway. <laughs> so. Daz, thanks very much for showing us nitrous. I think you might have set uh, a little trend off with me there. Mm -hmm. Thanks for coming. Thanks a lot, right, mate. Sounds. Cheers. Are you all sitting comfortably? Then let me tell you a story. Right, the other day I went to see a member of my family and while I'm stood there talking to her, this rumble turns up behind me. And what was it? Well, it was Richard in his micro. Richard, nice to see you. Nice to see Thanks you. Thanks for coming along. It's all right. It's lovely. It's a bit different, isn't it? It is. It's really subtle. I mean, that's a, it's a lovely colour. Is it a standard micro colour? Yeah, it is, yeah. Standard metallic colour, yeah. It's uh, fantastic with the nice little stripe running along. I mean, where did you get that from? Um, I saw it on a Nissan Sunny GTIR, so I thought that'll do for me. Yeah, Put it on my micro. It's wonderful. Was it easy to get on, and did you have a company um, for you? No, a place in High did it for me, so they did all the graphics. I mean, you, what you've really done is just sort of accentuated the body, really, isn't it? And just brought out the, yeah, the nice all, little details. Most of it's all cosmetic, really, yeah. rather than uh, engine mods. Is that a start, or is it...? Yeah, know? I think I'm going to work on to the engine mods. Uh, I mean, they do up to, like, 300 brake horsepower. <laughs> so, what, in a micro? In a micro, so... God bless you. That, uh, that might be my next project. <laughs> no, I would like to see you in a brake horsepower <laughs> in a micro. I think that would be a lot of fun. Very big wheels for a micro now. I wouldn't have said you've been able to fit. What sort of size are we talking? Uh, the 17s. Uh, I did start off with 15s, went to 16s, and they said they were the biggest. But I thought there was a lot of room under there, so I went for the 17s. Have you had trouble getting them in, or were they um, quite easy, really? It was all right on the back, mainly on the front. I had to have the inside pin back. Right. For, so I had the turning circle. Um, and I obviously had it lowered as well. Well, lowered quite a bit as well, about 30 mil? Yeah, about 35 mil, yeah. Uh, I mean, it looks really good. I mean, it's a, it's a standard micro body kit, obviously. That's right, yeah. But, I mean, it, it still looks very low to the ground, I think, you know, with the wheels itself. They uh -huh. look very sort of uh, touring car, don't they? Yeah, what, that's right, yeah. What um, are they? They're TSW Imolas, so... And very nice they are as well. Now, obviously, they take great care. Do you wash it every day? Yep. <laughs> every single day. If How I did I know you were going to say <laughs> that to me? <laughs> now, you carried some of the... Uh, some of the colour onto the inside as well, haven't you? Yeah, I've just done a few. A uh, bit of colour coding inside. There's the uh, red door handle, the handbrake, the uh, sparse, sparkle uh, gear knob, and also the Selm steering wheel. So just a few extra touches. Yeah, make just it a to bit make different, it, really. Yeah, make it a bit more uh, homely inside. That's right, yeah. So what made you actually modify a Micra? Uh, you don't see any of them around. I like the shape of them. Yeah. I think they're a really good-looking car. Um, and they're just different. A lot of people have 
Uh, you see a lot of Fords. So I thought, well, Nissan Micra, you don't see many. No, you don't so see a, any. <laughs> we'll, have a, we'll have a go at doing one of them. Why not? I've got to be very honest with you and say, when I first thought about a modified Micra, I, I wasn't really that big. But, I mean, now seeing what you've done to it, I'm... Uh, I'm really impressed, and I hope you do do your 300 brake horse for us and then come back <coughs> and show us, because I'd like to see that. I will do, yes. Now, just down at the front, I mean, we've still got the line coming down to the front, and uh, the two extra fog lights down at the front yeah. we've seen on a couple of extra cars. Had the uh, spots fitted this week. Uh, look quite nice at night. Yeah. Do they actually uh, add a bit of light to the road for you? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they yeah, look quite good. Look, look really well at night. So, just all lots to this shape, really. And what do the police say about this? Um, not a lot, really. <laughs> I'll zip along past them. <laughs> Try to, anyway. Well, um, for a 1.316 valve, which uh, you says nippy. Yeah, it's quite nippy, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's not too bad. I think you've done very well as a, as a start. I really do like it. And right. uh, please carry on. I will do, yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Thanks for coming, Richard. Okay, Cheers. Now. Cheers now. Hello children, Pistons back, hmm, yes, well this week I've been asked to explain to you the advantages of a six-speed gearbox over a five-speed gearbox, and here, well, this is my gear lever, well, sort of, hmm, well, when you're driving along your favourite A road and you've got your girl beside you, hmm, I know, hmm, and you've got your happening tunes blaring away, and you get the urge to give your car a bit of a caning, well, you're driving along and you're changing gear. Well, when you change gear, the engine has to adjust its revs to meet the new ratio and you actually have a slight loss in performance as when you change gear you have a gap, obviously. The more gears that you have, well the smaller the gap between the ratios and therefore you lose less of your engine rev range and you can keep it in that glorious power band, mm, I know you like to keep them up there don't you, eh? Well, that's how it works and therefore six speed gearbox is obviously much better than a five speed gearbox. Oh, it bricks back memories, driving along that A road with Sandra beside me, Cliff in the shadows playing out the heavy skiffle, oh that got me going in my little Cortina, eh, eh, well drive carefully children, bye bye. So we've got time for this week. Make sure you're here next week because we've got all this coming up. Coming up on next week's Powerhouse, Johnny Walsh shows us that a little Felicia can be a lot of fun. Also going down a gritty combination of raw power and family practicality. Give your wife the ride of her life and scare the kids to death in 180 miles an hour Mondeo. And this car really is adults only, as we serve up another portion of mutant power with the Escort RS. You lucky lot. <laughs> 